Nutrition Part 1 What is the difference between living and non-living? If we see a dog barking, a cow chewing and grazing, or a man dancing, these are living beings. What if the dog, the cow, or the man were asleep? We would still think they were alive, but how do we know that? We see them breathing, and we know that they are alive. What about plants? How do we know that they are alive? We see them green, some of us will say. But what about plants that have leaves and colors other than green? They grow over time, so we know that they are alive. In other words, we think of movement, either related to growth or not, as evidence of being alive. But a plant that is not visibly growing is still alive, and some animals breathe without visible movement. So using visible movement as the defining characteristic of life is not enough. Movements of small scales will not be visible to the naked eye. Viruses do not show any molecular movement until they infect some cells, which is partly why there is a controversy about whether they are truly living. Why are molecular movements needed for life? We know that living organisms are well-organized structures, made up of tissues, tissues have cells, cells have smaller components in them, and so on. Because of the effects of the environment, this organized, ordered nature of living structures is likely to keep breaking down over time. If the order breaks down, the organism will die. So living creatures must keep repairing and maintaining their structures. Since all these structures are made up of molecules, they must move molecules around all the time. We will learn about the maintenance processes in living organisms. What are life processes? The maintenance functions of living organisms must go on even when they are not doing anything. Even when we are just sitting or sleeping, this maintenance work goes on. Since these maintenance processes are needed to prevent damage and breakdown, energy is needed for them. This energy comes from outside the body of the individual organism. So there must be a process to transfer energy from outside the body to the organism, which is called food or nutrition. If the body of the organism is to grow, additional raw materials will also be needed from outside. Life on Earth depends on carbon-based molecules, as food sources are also carbon-based. Depending on the complexity of these carbon sources, different organisms use different kinds of nutritional processes. The outside sources of energy could be quite varied since the environment is not under the control of the organism. These sources of energy need to be broken down or built up in the body and finally converted to a uniform source of energy that can be used for the various molecular movements needed for maintaining living structures and body growth. For this, a series of chemical reactions in the body are necessary. Oxidizing-reducing reactions are the most common chemical means to break down molecules. For this, many organisms use oxygen from outside. The process of acquiring oxygen from outside the body and using it in the breakdown of food sources for cellular needs is what we call respiration. In the case of a single-celled organism, no specific organs for taking in food, gas exchange, or the removal of waste may be needed because the entire surface of the organism is in contact with the environment. But when the size of the organism increases and the body design becomes complex? In multicellular organisms, all the cells may not be in direct contact with the surrounding environment. Thus, simple diffusion will not meet the requirements of all the cells. We have seen previously how, in multicellular organisms, various body parts have specialized functions to perform. See the video on nutrition part 2 and digestion.